Hello and welcome to Kerbal Space Ram. First of all, a quick announcement. Remember the thing where I was talking about Guard indecisively plays, you know, Telltale games? Looks like it'll be Saturday mornings at 11 a.m. Remember, all times are in UTC minus 8 because that's my time zone, but that had the most votes. Conveniently, it's also when I wanted to do it the most, so I should start the first recording this Saturday. That's in a couple of days. So there you go. For now, though, these are all the StockCraft, however they don't say StockCraft, except for this one. Today I'm showing off a little design that I made, well, I was trying to make a bigger design, I was trying to make basically a copy of the Skylon vehicle, and that did not work well at all. So then I started trying to make like a really really tiny Skylon vehicle, and that actually worked out fairly well. Oh yes, it has the big docking port here, and then the cargo bay there. This is, of course, unmanned. Well, not. I mean, you could, you could. It is unmanned. You could put seats in it, of course, or just cargo. And it is a VTOL? Yes, no, yes, VTOL. Ha <laughs> ha As well as an SSTO. It's been like a week since I've been able to play Girl Search Ramp, so I kind of forgot some of the terminologies, which is kind of funny or sad. I mean, it's up to you to decide whether it's funny or sad. Also, this thing takes off very slowly, of course it does, it's, you know, very, very much, oh yes, it's very much a rocket, not really a plane, so I should be flying it mostly vertically, at least for the first part of its trip, it's very much a rocket, not a plane, but it does do a SSTO style, you know, th these, to get more efficient fuel usage, we do try to flip over and burn horizontal for quite a while to regain our energy. I forgot to install a very important plugin for doing this video, which really sucks. Uh, that plugin is called GHUD. It allows you to see orbital statistics and like the name of your craft and whatnot on your keyboard if you have a keyboard that supports it, which I now do since I went and got myself a nice Logitech G510S keyboard, which is really fancy and, you know, a bit expensive but oh my god the, the features it has are nice and I just I got it thinking eh I will guess I'll see what these are really about because I hear people say that they're so awesome and good and stuff and I don't know why people say that and now I do because they are awesome and good and stuff so yeah this is inspired by the Skylon however it's of course like a probe thing and I accidentally clicked outside the window so it froze for a moment sorry about that now you get to see the slightly glitchiness of just staring up the tail end of the craft. And I just realized I've completely forgotten to turn this thing over and burn horizontal. So now we're probably going to run out of air way before we need to be running out of air. Which is going to suck for this thing's ability to get into orbit. Because now it pretty much won't get into orbit. Unless it's like crazily overpowered. Because it might be. I don't know. I don't remember if it's crazily overpowered. I do remember that... I do remember that I'm forgetting to mention something else. I won an SSD while I was at scale. And I briefly mentioned this, I think, in the other video I made right away when I got back. But yeah, I won an SSD, so I've actually just gotten through reinstalling Windows and all my programs. In fact, I think I need to restart again one more time to finish installing some stuff. I think it's, uh, yeah, the graphics drivers. I actually need to restart right now to finish updating my graphics drivers. But yeah, I've reinstalled Windows and a bunch of stuff because I got an SSD and I made that my main hard drive. Also, we're not going to get into orbit or maybe not even into space at this rate it looks like. Well, because you can see the oxidizer, we're definitely about to run out. <coughs> Excuse me. There goes that demonstration. However, this thing can fly to orbit if you fly it correctly. I'm just not doing that thing. And there we go. Not even getting into space. I guess you can see how it reacts to re-entry, I'm guessing. Oh yes, this is a fresh install of KSP as well, because this is actually on my main drive now. Now that my main drive is an SSD, I decided to put KSP on that SSD to see how quickly it would load, because I know loading KSP from an SSD is like super fast instead of like a minute or two to load. And yeah, it was super fast, although not so much faster that I'm probably going to keep doing that because it 
it was really great, it was really nice, but at the same time, I don't mind waiting for KSP to boot up. I'm always doing like 20 million different things on my computer at once, so I, I don't mind the wait. Okay, we're starting to get re-entry heating, or re-entry effects rather, and the thing flips out and goes backwards, which is hilarious. Also, I suppose I should uh, turn off the time warp and put out the landing gear and turn that off and what's the other thing I'm looking for I need to deploy a parachute although I'm not going to deploy it yet because we're still going at a rather high speed oh hey look we're almost regaining control look at that regaining control brilliant now we can pull up with this lifting body and slow our descent. Although this thing of course cannot land like a plane. It is not that kind of a vehicle. But we can pop the parachute. Which will then slow us down much more. <laughs> I didn't even realize this could fly like this, but that's kind of funny. I'm using the parachute to just kind of slow down and I'm gliding along. See how high I can pull it up. About that high. This is the weirdest like gliding, falling profile ever. And then eventually it'll flip around or the parachute will open and cause it to flip. Well, it'll flip around no matter what. Although it looks like it's going to be the parachute flipping open rather than us being able to pull up far enough to flip around. It is by no means a maneuverable piece of craft. I mean, it is, it is, it can move pretty well on its own, but the aerodynamics of it are not move, r maneuverable. The aerodynamics of it are lawn dart, because it's basically a lawn dart with space attached to it, space stuff, and a rocket engine, and tiny, tiny little landing gear. And I'm kind of getting bored of it taking this long to descend, so I'm actually going to make it go down faster, which is kind of hilarious. The way this thing flies is just a wee bit ridiculous, to say the least. Now we're going to pull up a little bit, and then somewhere... I'm guessing I have it set for 500 then. At about 500 meters, the parachute will deploy. 500? Yep, 500 it was. And here's the point where I'd switch the engine, there you go, and throttle up slightly to reduce our impact speed, or not, what's it saying, why is it, there we go, air breathing mode. And of course I don't want to use too much fuel or go too, f well not use too much fuel, I don't want to go too high a thrust and lose control, well, not lose control, lose the parachute, because KSP will decide, oh, you don't need this parachute anymore. And of course, we have to fight the parachute slightly, because the parachute wants to pull us in a different direction than we want to go. But as you can see, this thing has a very nice, slow, controlled descent. Oh yes, and then once I turn off the uh, stability, it will fall over. And of course, if you land it on land, then it lands upright and stays upright, or maybe falls over. I haven't actually landed it on land yet, I don't think. But if you land it properly, it will stay landed correctly. Anyhow, that's all for today. Thanks for watching, as always. Download in the description, and see you in space. Hello and welcome to... Holy shit, I'm clipping out, aren't I? Hello and welcome to... Hello and welcome to... Hello and welcome to... Hello and welcome to... I'm... Wait, what the fuck?